Welcome to Digital Ship VPO webinar on analytics and advice using low frequency vessel data and data collection via apps. Today we are meeting up with vessel performance AI company Greens Team. Our two guest speakers are Simon Whitford, CEO, and Daniel Jacobson, Chief Scientific Officer. Green's team is sponsoring this webinar. Prepare to hear lots of new information. Also send us your questions. Carl Jeffrey, founding editor of Digital Ship, will be moderating the discussion. But first of all, I'm inviting him to introduce you to the subject and what you will hear today in more detail. Let's go, Carl. Okay, so the biggest problem shipping companies seem to be having with vessel performance, based on the questions we're getting at the webinars, is getting good, trustworthy data from the ship. And the second biggest problem, I think, is uh, getting usable insights from it. What um, companies want to do is be able to adjust the ship speed the whole time to get the right balance between the fuel you use, but you don't want to arrive late. And if you only if you only have noonday report to do that with, and the noonday report data isn't always accurate, that's uh, very difficult. But it seems like the only option you have is to put in expensive flow meters, which send data automatically all the time, which is also expensive and complex to manage. So. What are we going to do about that? Green's team is going to present two technologies which can help you get the insights you need more quickly without spending more money on sensors and data loggers. So first of all, we're going to hear about a mobile phone app. This is something seafarers can use to take instruments from flow meters and tank gauges on board. So if they're using pen and paper and typing the number in, we can get errors easily. We can get data taken at a different time to what they say. And there's even suspects, suspicions of fraud sometimes but with the phone app. They can just take a photograph of whatever output the instrument gives. The computer converts the photo into a reading. And we've got a digital record, and the app can remind seafarers if they forget to take the photograph. And the second thing we're going to hear about today is advances in AI technologies, which offer you much better insights from this good quality data than we have now. So you can get some uh, richer insights without needing this expense into high frequency data. So this is a kind of jargon we're using here, low frequency data, noonday reports, data that comes once a day and high frequency data is data that comes from sensors that might give you a reading every few seconds. So our speaker today is Simon Whitford, who's CEO of Green's team, which is a vessel performance optimization and AI company. He's based in Cheltenham in the UK. So he's been in the maritime commercial and bunkering technology world for a long time former executive general manager of Gulf Oil Marine, a lubricant supplier, managing director of Strainstell, an offshore monitoring technology company, and chartering director of James Fisher Everard, which owns 20 product tankers. And he's also been a commercial marketing and technology director of BP with BP International Marine, supplying marine lubricants. And uh, he's gonna give a presentation about 20 minutes and then we'll take your questions. And in the questions, he's gonna be joined by Green Steam's Chief Scientific Officer, Daniel Jacobson. So I'd like to invite Simon to give the opening talk. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Carl. Let me just share my slides. Can everybody see my slides, Carl? Yeah. Okay, so thanks, Carl, and hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar today. And I'd like to thank also um, my colleague and Green Steam's co-founder, our Chief Scientific Officer that Carl just introduced, Daniel Jacobson, he'll be joining um, with the Q&A later on. So it's no surprise to anybody, I'm sure, that CO2 monitoring and regulation is likely to upset the balance of the shipping industry. The last time something like this happened was the 1st of January 2020, when the sulfur cap was introduced. That created uncertainties, it brought and imposed costs, but it also brought opportunities. I expect we're all feeling something similar is coming this time, but the response of the industry could be more nuanced and there may be more polarization between winners and losers. Monitoring of CO2 emissions is already imposing new costs on ship owners and operators. And when shipping derived CO2 emissions start to be traded, as they almost certainly will be, already 45% of man-made CO2 emissions in Europe is traded, current price is $50 a tonne, this will directly assign a cost to each tonne of um, greenhouse gas released from vessel operations. Ship owners who see 
how to take advantage and those who have already got a strategy for EEOI reduction that recognize an, a, a fleet emission advantage are currently kind of giving away that value for free. But that will in due course deliver some kind of environmental premium on future charter rates for the most efficient operators. So I don't think there's much doubt that CO2 emissions performance will have a financial impact on every shipping company. The nice thing about this challenge is that for every three tons of CO2 not emitted, that's a ton of fuel saved. So what's good for the environment is also good for your bank balance. So just in case you think this is a, becoming the quickest ever uh, most straightforward webinar you've attended or you'll start asking for your money back, I need to share a few challenges with you. Confidence that all the right steps are being taken is kind of difficult without clear and accurate information. You definitely need an objective and trustworthy view of your operations before you decide how to take action and gain any advantage. Like in many other businesses and all sorts of sectors, it's getting access to data and then what knowledge can be derived from that data. That is what decides if you ride this opportunity and earn more or simply see additional costs. So there are two aspects here, getting access to data and then what you learn from the data. And this is where I'd like to go next. If we want to fully understand and tell the story of this particular vessel's performance, then we need to encompass around 17 variables, some of which are quite interrelated and most of which are changing all the time. Shipping is especially difficult because these variables are all different. Some are natural physical phenomena like weather and sea state. Others are man-made decisions like course setting and speed. And one is biological, fouling growth on the hull and propeller. So that sounds like a recipe for confusion. And also why this next slide could be the most confusing one I'll show you today. This very busy slide only plots six of the 17 variables and only just over a 12 hour period. It's taken from a vessel on Greensteam's platform. Add another 11 and then give me a continuous prediction of the state of fouling on the vessel, plus the power fuel needed to move the vessel and overcome all of these, but that's our task. Sounds like a recipe for confusion, like international phone calls between 17 countries where everyone's speaking this different language at the same time and most don't understand each other. Yes, why only AI methods can manage this complexity and find patterns in the data to explain the power requirement. And it's why it takes a company like Greensteam 13 years of hard graft to master the subject. Non-AI empirical methods are available, but quite unable to handle anything like 17 dimensions and so must resort to filtering out 90% of the data in an attempt to make the task manageable. The problem with sa um, sampling is it really changes the problem you're trying to solve and does not give you anywhere near the clarity or accuracy you need. My takeaway, artificial intelligence is essential. Until now, the world of vessel performance management has been kind of split into two parts. On the left, we have manual noon reports and empirical, highly filtered methods of calculation. That's the largest part of the market. Most accessible because really it's the lowest common denominator. On the right, we have relatively few vessels for the world fleet with high frequency data loggers on board. They're feeding data into data hungry artificial intelligence models. Greensteam's AI model understands and uses all of the 17 parameters affecting the vessel's need for power and therefore fuel. 
as it goes from port to port, either loaded with cargo or in ballast. It makes very few assumptions. Just the absolute certainties of life, like warm seas take less energy to transit than cold seas. It assumes almost nothing else, continually searching for patterns in the data that correctly predict the power from all of these inputs. So as I keep saying, we've been at this for 13 years and we're trusted by some of the biggest names in shipping. But having said that, we're constantly humbled and excited by the complexity of the task we face and the changing needs of these customers. So if you've not realized this yet, I believe that the experience of our history suggests that data hungry AI is the only workable approach to understanding vessel performance and emissions in the 21st century. I'm gonna pause there. We've got a little poll, which I'll ask Veda to please um, put up on the screen now. So the first question is what's your primary focus in operating your fleet? Is it reducing fuel and operational costs, financial reasons? Is it reducing emissions or are they both equally important? I guess we can go ahead and vote now, please, Veda. Yeah, people are waiting, uh, are voting. Okay, great. Thank yeah, you. just two more seconds. Yeah, and I think we have clear results now. So 75% are saying that both are equally important. Only 24% said that their primary focus is reducing fuel and operational costs, reducing emissions. Uh, only 1% of our audience is thinking about. Great, okay, thank you. So I think we're in a process of transition. We've seen um, formerly vessel performance managers being now described as CO2 sustainability managers. And I guess we're in a process of change as we go forward. So then can we go to the second um, poll, which is whether you have a strategy already in place for the forthcoming IO mission, IMO emissions reduction targets, and the options are, there's four options. The first one is, yes, we're ready and confident about handling that. Second one is, we started to look at that. We're researching ideas. The third, we really don't know where to start. And no, we haven't turned our attention. Everybody's busy with many things, particularly during COVID. Uh, that's not a priority yet for us. If you could please um, give us your thoughts on that, that would be um, great. Yeah. I think we already have the results. I'm sharing them with you. So we are researching ideas now, 53% of can't our can't see it on the screen, Veda. Ah, once again, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sharing the results. So 53% are researching ideas now, 29% are ready and confident to go with it, and 14% don't know where to start. Only 5% doesn't see it as a priority. Great. So if we put the last two categories at the top, we'd see the gradual rising trend of, um, of its importance coming, I think. Thank you very much for uh, participating in that poll. Okay. So now we need to talk about data. So facing CO2 regulations and all of the IMO action and things like that, which are gonna both monitor and monetize vessel emissions is not something you want to take on, I would suggest all alone. Information is power, but ignorance is peril. The reassuring thing is that all the data we need clearly exists somewhere because it's impacting ship performance. So what are our options? especially for the average age and specification of ship in the market, which is probably charted out on short-term contracts, what can we do? Noon reports are certainly ubiquitous, and we plenty of experience in Greensteam here of taking this data and using it to build models. But there are solid reasons for considering 
moving beyond those as a source, particularly of vessel performance data. Whilst Greenstein models can live with receiving data only once every 24 hours, because a part of our data pipeline takes noon data and combines this with high frequency AIS data, high resolution weather and sea state information, and then back calculates or interpolates 10 minute frequency consumption. That makes sense of um, 24 hour noon reports and the vessel's position in um, weather encountered. That's what we do as a first step in all our AI models. But what we can't do much about is both accidental and deliberate bias in manual reports. We've begun to classify the different quality sins, we could call them, that we see. And here are five that come up a lot. Our colleague Jonas Fredrickson will run a seminar shortly, which dives into these and other data quality sins um, in due course. And we've started building simple and sophisticated, the sophisticated ones are based on AI tools to capture uh, when we see these data quality sins in the, in the data. Um, but we really are living with this kind of misreported data all of the time. And the simple truth is that poor reporting definitely holds back the accuracy of our AI models. And something needs to be done about that. Some of the 17 variables are more susceptible to misreporting than others. For instance, trim is really difficult, whilst fuel consumption is obviously subject to some of these biases here. So here we are. Our view of the problem is this, that artificial intelligence and high quality vessel data are the two necessities. But that's clear. The problem is that both of these come with their own baggage. Nothing is simple. With all the problems in inaccuracies of noon reports, it looks like for the moment, we are tied to relying on auto log data, expensive and difficult to install, especially at the moment. Then, since our AI models are so data sensitive, it takes them quite a while to see enough data to get to know and understand vessel performance. Which means waiting time for good results is about 90 days. So that's okay if you're an owner operator and with patience, you'll get the highest accuracy vessel specific models you've ever seen. But what if your vessel is one of the majority on short term TC that makes up most of the market? Starting work on this project in 2019, Greensteam was determined to do something about and bring the much needed clarity and accuracy of AI analytics to every vessel of the world fleet. Now you probably all heard of Moore's law. It applied to the number of transistors doubling in an integrated circuit about every two years and in so doing exponentially transforming processing capability. The two challenges we've been working on are a little less demanding than that. The first one was how to cut the time to get a decent AI model to one third of the 90 days, so 30 days, which would make it suitable for a much wider group of ships. And the second, kind of fundamental to achieving the first, was how to evolutionize, you heard the word here first, noon reporting of the data needed for vessel performance to both increase frequency, accuracy, and make reporting transparent. This led to Greensteam Capture and Greensteam's new hybrid AI model. Now we've just seen this slide earlier. It shows the two approaches to modeling vessel performance. The commonest empirical approach to the left and the AI process tied to a pipeline of autolog data on the right. 
what now if we put our 13 experience 13 years excuse me of experience across many vessel sectors to use and create a new ai model that took our multi-year multi-vessel experience using that for guidance especially in early days when there is less real vessel data this is what our data scientists have been working on for most of the lockdown period across denmark the uk and poland we call this our hybrid AI model. And it learns not only from the vessel specific data, but it also takes more broader lessons and guidance from many more vessels that we have experience of on Greensteam's platform. Greensteam's hybrid model can now deliver AI clarity after just 30 days of good data. The second part of the project, which we started back in September 2019, was also quite difficult, but quite different from the first. The question was, is there a way to get accurate vessel data, especially fuel consumption data, without manual entry from any gauge or meter on every vessel? And also, while we're at it, to increase the frequency of data collection. Well, it turns out there is, and we've called it green steam capture, hopefully for obvious reasons. We can go into much more detail and demonstrate green steam capture to you at your convenience. And I'm putting some details at the end where you can fix up a 30 minute demonstration with us. But basically it's a downloadable app, which is simplicity itself for the seafarer to use, simply pointing it at a meter capturing the data, capturing the image, converting it to data. It combines features like a task list to remind the operator when readings are needed. It time and date stamps every meter reading. Um, it's available to be supported remotely worldwide, and it can read meters on any vessel, any meter on any vessel. We've compared it to um, autolog vessels, and the only timings that we've seen the only difference is we've seen a slight timings on when the readings were taken. We had a 0.2% error rate, which was totally accounted for by timing. The key factor about Green Steam Capture is it validates and captures audit images of every meter that's read. So with our new hybrid model, which gives clear, accurate AI analytics after 30 days of good data, and Greensteam Capture, which provides three to four times as much data as Noon reports, we've taken a good step towards democratizing good data collection for all and making AI analytics available to every vessel in the world fleet. We don't need equipment on board and we don't need to test your patients waiting for good results. Veda, perhaps we could go now to our second poll, please. So the second one is what do you think is the biggest culprit for fuel wastage on your vessel out of these three, which we commonly measure from our um, platform? First one is speed management. The second one is trim. The third one is hull. Or the fourth one is something else, or, or if you're not clear. If you could let us know your thoughts now, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, we have the results. Speed right. management is the culprit. Very good. Thank you very much for um, participating. So speed management, which I guess comes into route management as well, is certainly one which we've seen offer some very big savings from optimizing and of course hull fouling dragging a hull a fouled hull excuse me through the water definitely adds a significant burden the second one the question which we have for you which is more targeted towards uh, what we're aiming for in green steam capture is do you believe that fuel fuel fraud which is part of the whole aspect which capture hopes to address is a significant challenge for the industry First answer, yes, we've seen it. 
Second, I've certainly heard about it. Or no, I don't think it's really so significant. If you could give us your thoughts now, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, people are still voting. Let's give two more seconds. Okay, I'll have a drink of water. Okay, we have the result. So I'm sharing them with you. So I what is you I don't think you're sharing them with us. Okay, let me give one more chance. Yeah, 44%, that's what I hear. They agree fuel fraud is the challenge and 34% are experienced this. Great. 24% no, don't, don't know about that. Sure. Okay. I don't imagine those statistics are a big surprise to anybody. Thanks very much, Veda. So coming into the home straight now. So let me just click on my screen. So with all these developments that I've talked through, we can now provide rapid results to your entire fleet. No vessel is off the grid. It all starts with a hybrid AI model using good data from Green Steam Capture, which can be downloaded in a matter of minutes. All of our analytical and performance improvement tools use the model which we create to provide clear and accurate analysis of vessel performance, and also to make predictions for the future. Analytic tools separate out how each factor affects vessel emissions. Operational tools allow you to evaluate new ways of operating more efficiently in the future and technical tools help assess the performance of energy saving devices against a pre-installation baseline. We can now measure fouling, speed and trim waste and decompose, if you see the, I'll just point to it with my cursor, decompose all of these things to identify how much energy was used as a necessity to move the vessel from A to B and how much was consumed fighting the weather, fighting the sea state, or because of suboptimal um, arrangements of the vessel. And this particular element is a cornerstone of any emission strategy. An up-to-date vessel model, bottom right in the slide, is really um, important and, is, and we can now predict by putting any factors we want into the vessel model which we built, um, to create speed and fuel um, curve for any set of conditions based always on the vessel's latest performance. Our AI models specific to your vessel can also drive predictive services which allow you to optimize the vessel's performance in the future. So bottom left now, this one here, is how Green Steam optimizes hull condition by predicting the current state of fouling on the vessel and that enables condition-based hull cleaning, which both minimizes the fuel depth from fouling and also protects the coating by having cleaning interventions at an earlier point when softer, gentler methods can be used. And of course, fouling, as we just saw on the slide um, earlier on the poll, is one of the largest drivers of fuel wastage and excess emissions. We commonly see double digit percentages of fouling resistance from dirty hulls. Green Steam's dynamic trim optimizer, top right, uploads an AI model of the specific vessel onto the ship. And by combining this with sensor data, continuously measuring draft, speed, and trim, the captain gets on the spot advice via a tablet which shows how adjustments in trim will reduce power consumption. And there we've seen typically around four, but savings in the range of two to 6% when, speed advice, when trim advice is followed. Getting near the last of these now, top left is Speed Optimizer. This couples our vessel model with our marine forecasting service. So for a given route, we run many different speed profile simulations using our model as a predicting machine and select which one minimizes the vessel's, in, the vessel's contact with poor weather, shallow water, echo zones to deliver savings, which are 
more fluctuating depending on the conditions and the tightness of the of the lacan but can be in the range of two to ten percent it's always good to stay up to date with latest events and Greensteam's vessel model is updated we call it retrained usually each month with vessel data reflect to reflect the current performance and fouling state um, state finally bottom right in the middle we can attach smart automated notifications to any of these services so for instance once a vessel model has been built an automated smart notification is usually configured and triggers a hull fouling alert if hull resistance passes eight percent that can then prompt the ship manager to start planning for an in-water cleaning of the hull. So we've a lot more to show you, but time is of course tight and we want to get to the questions and answers. We can take you through the detailed features of Greensteam Capture. The bottom line to this is we try to make good data and AI analytics available for every vessel. We would love to learn more about your needs and to see if we can help. Thank you very much for your attention and back to you, Carl. Okay, well, that's great. Well, I think it's amazing how this subject is evolving. It's uh, different every time we hear more about it. So I'd like to invite the audience. You can see the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen there. There's already one, one question there. Um, so just, just, just to warm up, maybe we'll bring in uh, Daniel Jacobson, who's the uh, Chief Scientific Officer. I'm, I'm very intrigued by this, this hybrid models. So what I'm understanding by this, so people used to say that every ship is different. So you have to make a model for every specific ship and that's what takes ages. So what you're saying now is ships are different, but they're not so different. You can use elements. So if you've got like another Aframax tanker, you've done one of those before, maybe it's useful. You can use part of the model for this next one. Is this the basic idea of hybrid AIs? Uh, well, it's a complex uh, subject. Um, by the way, can you hear me all right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Um, it is a complex subject, and um, as we move uh, forward uh, in Green's team, um, we will be able to combine data from uh, hundreds and thousands of vessels to uh, make our AI even more clever than it is already. But uh, the basic idea of the hybrid model is that you combine uh, physical a, a prior knowledge, what you know about how vessels perform, right, with data. So, for example, uh, we know that there's a relation between uh, sea surface temperature and resistance. So warm water generally reduces uh, viscosity and frictional resistance. So um, that's an example of, of a physical, uh, a piece of physical knowledge or hydrodynamic knowledge that you can uh, feed into your modeling. You can, before the, the model sees any data, you can, you can help it a little bit, you know, you can tell it that this is how the world works. And you can do similar things for added resistance and waves and wind resistance and the split between residual and, and frictional resistance, for example. And then uh, that means that it's not like a classical model because it's still, uh, it's still run by the data. So as the data comes in, it gets adjusted, right? But it's starting off uh, in a more uh, sensible place, you can say, rather than with uh, what you might call black box machine learning, where you have no idea about anything before you see the first data point, right? So, so it's basically feeding into the modeling our experience and, and the experience of other people to get a head start, basically. Oh, and is the modeling manual, like with data science? It's not, I mean, it's 90 days that somebody actually doing work trying to build models manually, or it's, it's not like you're no, feeding it. It's automated, yeah. Oh, right, it's okay. Very, yeah, it's very important for us to be scalable because we believe that uh, the, the real benefits of AI um, really start to shine when you scale up to hundreds and thousands of vessels because then you can then cross learn across vessels and all that stuff. So uh, from the start, we've always aimed at uh, automated learning. Of course, there's a, a team of uh, uh, machine learning experts building the, the core algorithms and the core platform and all that. But for your particular vessel, uh, learning, training, prediction is all automated. Wow. It's also important to, you know, so that you have the, uh, the smart alerts as soon as possible, for example. Oh, sounds great. Well, we have seven questions now. If you notice, you can upvote the questions. So the ones with the most upvotes go to the top of the list. So I guess we'll start at the top of the list with uh, NASA Jetha. But a lot of uh, interest in uh, weather here. <laughs> so NASA Jetha is asking what weather sources you use. And Nikos is 
Becky Aris is asking, how do you model the amount of power you need to overcome extreme weather, if that's something you haven't seen in the historic model? Is that for uh, Daniel, maybe those two? Maybe Daniel can kick off with the first one, perhaps, please. Sure, yeah. So we use a variety of weather sources. We are also talking to uh, several potential and existing partners who uh, work, who specialize in weather sources or weather, let's say, metocean forecasting and hindcasting. Um, uh, our system, so we have our own um, server or platform, you might say, for that, that Simon referred to. It's, we just call it the Marine Forecasting Server. And uh, it is built, uh, architected in a way where it has all the basic stuff on the ground floor, like the GS, uh, GSF and the Copernicus data and so on. Uh, but it's, it's built in such a way that if a certain customer wants some other source to be used, let's say in a particular region, then you can add it on top for that region. So it's, it's a very flexible uh, platform. And uh, Simon, do you want to? So I'm just going to, I'm just thinking about all the questions we need to get through. So I was just going to say the second <laughs> part of that, which is we don't optimize for route, but we do provide our vessel models to those that do. We optimize for speed along a given route, but our models are also available through APIs because they, we believe they represent the best version of, uh, best, most accurate version of the vessel. They're available to, to other routing algorithms um, through an API. Oh. Um, it's like jump into the next one, just uh, so yes. Nikos's question. Thanks, Nikos. So how do you estimate the power needed to overcome extreme weather conditions? I'll start and then Daniel can, can um, maybe come in. So what we do, we have an accurate model of the vessel, uh, which we can feed any set of conditions into, and it gives us an estimate of the power required and a very accurate estimate. So we run multiple simulations along a route and by adding in the vessel position, um, the speed, which is being modeled, and then using the weather, we can then get an output from our model, which is the power consumption. And by running all these simulations, we can then see which, um, which speed profile along the route has encountered the least bad weather. And, um, and also the, the model gives us an output of the uh, power consumed. So that's how we can choose. It's done that way by simulating multiple um, multiple speed profiles using the vessel model. Maybe I can just quickly add that uh, predicting, yeah. if you take the waves, for example, the sea state, that, that's a difficult problem. And in, in the past with tra traditional methods, it has often been difficult to estimate, especially when you have extreme weather conditions. But we do have methods that are more flexible and more machine learning so that you to feed them mm -hmm. enough data, they are able to learn, you know, even with extreme weather conditions, what it, uh, how it impacts performance. Oh. Okay, so, shall I jump so, to the next one? Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay, one. so France's question. Thanks, France. How do you uh, do process? Do you do processing on the vessel or only on a cloud service? How do you overcome real-time communication challenges at sea? Well, answering the second bit first, we don't really need um, to have too many uh, or real-time communication. Absolute real-time is not really a necessity. Uh, we do do data processing on the vessel because on our DTO light system and our DTO full system, we download a vessel model to the vessel and use that as a kind of autonomous version of the vessel to predict optimal trim. But most of the processing is done with the data um, in the cloud. And if Daniel, you want to? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, perhaps you could take the next one from Michael. Uh, yes, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Um, right. So I guess you're talking. You're thinking about some autolog data where you have uh, poor accuracy. Uh, oh, it went away. It's still there. Okay. It's still there. Uh, speed logs. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we are also very skeptical of speed logs. Uh, we have used them uh, normally by after doing some manual checking that it's you know not uh, trustworthy. But uh, we try to combine different uh, uh, sources. So for example, we have um, current forecasts in, in some areas, we can trust them more than in other areas. So and we record the, the speed of the ground of the vessel. So it's, a, it's hard to give a short answer to that, but it's, it's a problem we are very familiar with and we have ways of working around it. Okay, um, let me jump to Julian's um, question, where is data stored and who owns it? So data is stored 
on the cloud. It's uh, customer's data. We have a um, arrangement with our customers that we can use it in an anonymized way to improve the quality of the modeling, which we do for all our customers, but it's clearly the customer's data, which we have numerous um, policies around to protect the um, security and integrity of. Yeah, then there's a backfill question. We sometimes do that, but um, normally with, uh, it depends on the type of data. So with capture, we really don't have so far a lot of outages. So it's not really a problem. Um, also, it's, it's, a random, it's a rare occurrence with auto, collect, auto, um, auto lock data. And with noon reports, it's more about quality issues. So you would generally have to throw out some of the reports if the numbers are, are very bad and you can't reconstruct them. Could you take Florian's as well, please? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you, Florian. So uh, what the difference between our model and uh, many other previous models is that uh, it's not uh, saying that uh, we have a model and then it predicts something and then the difference between that prediction and the data is fouling because that would introduce these types of problems. Rather, the fouling is built into the model, um, specifically into the frictional resistance part of the model so that you are not learning it in two steps. Uh, the model is learning to predict uh, everything else and fouling at the same time. So you really don't get this problem. Great. Herman's question, uh, do, you also do you also supply only the model AI data part and data collection is done by others? We actually are unusual and a bit unique that we have a full range of data acquisition services that go right from well, the simplest level passes that translate noon reports into data to green steam capture, which we've mentioned all the way up to these autonomous systems uh, that can take a vessel model and act on it on board the vessel. And in between, there's a lot of vessels with um, data acquisition units on board for tankers and bulkers to um, connect up to sensors and bring it ashore. Again, in COVID times, we've also created a very simple crew install data logger, which can be sent to the ship and, um, and start um, collecting data. Uh, I might just add, Herman, that uh, sure. if you're asking, you know, you already have a data collection system, how hard is it to plug into Green Steam? It's not hard, it's part of our strategy is to make it easy for anyone with data to plug in so that you can access our models in AI. Okay, great. I'm gonna answer the other two Mariks and Shane's together, if I may. So the, um, the simple answer is the more the better. And even once a day, we still have all the quality aspects of um, the, sorry, the question was how frequently and how much data is transmitted from the Capture app. Um, so the best we've seen is four readings a day. Obviously there's an unmanned engine room, so we don't see um, readings necessarily during the night, but the more, um, the more readings and the more spaced out they are across the day, but they're all piggledy, piggledy, of course, different intervals which we can cope with, the more accurate a job our first step of the AI model has of creating virtual high frequency consumption data across a smaller gap than um, 24 hours. Um, we like the crew to take as many readings as possible. The app is simply pick it up once it's configured um, pointed at a meter, it normally um, identifies a barcode, then it reads the data. And then the, the data is transferred in a whole number of ways ashore. We've got our first vessel, which is just using 3G, 4G, a coastal uh, tanker operator. We're sending it often to a encrypted location on the bridge PC from which it's picked up and sent ashore. We can also hook it into um, to Wi-Fi if that's available on board. Uh, we can supply it with USB-C to LAN connections so that it can be plugged in the engine room. And we have great partnerships within Marsat and KVH who can also um, set up connectivity as a service to pull the data off. Um, all of the data, if I was to show you a little nugget of data, it's totally encrypted um, and, um, and therefore um, not interfering. It's a very small uh, app that's downloaded. We can also download a a um, version of like TeamViewer or Samsung Knox where we can help the um, operator use it. So we haven't so far encountered any um, difficulties with um, people using their devices on this. We've thought of lots of ways to incentivize the crew and, um, and to build up a kind of ranking or to give them some kind of reward. And we're really on the way through that. 
the parcel of information sent is tiny. It's, um, it's a very low resolution image, which doesn't need to be sent ashore every time, but we generally do do that. And then the actual data itself is a few um, kilobytes. So that was part of the design of doing the OCR on board the vessel. Oh. Yeah, it's an interesting point where you compare with the, the other companies we've had on here and often doing routing, which I, I, just, I didn't realise you're not doing routing, you're not, you're not advising people what route to take, you're offering a very different positioning of what your service is looking at. Utam's question, optimising fuel consumption, because what, what you're specifically providing is advice on when to defoul or better understanding the power, which I think is you know, it's not really optimising fuel consumption, I suppose, is it? That's something it more is, linked Yeah, maybe, maybe Daniel can take that one. It kind of, it kind of is for speed, isn't it? So. Uh, yeah, well, it is for all of them, I would say, but for yeah. the particular example of speed, um, you can imagine the simplest example where you want to go from A to B and you have a certain ETA, so you could go constant speed or constant power, uh, but if there's uh, bad weather in the middle of your voyage that you could avoid by going a little bit more slowly in the first half of the voyage and then speeding a little bit up after the weather has passed, you would arrive at the same time and you would have used less fuel. And of course, it's more complicated than in real voyages, but that's the principle. Okay, taking push, am I okay, Carl? I just yeah, 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 yeah. Taking Pushkar's question, thanks Pushkar. So for vessels without VSAT internet capabilities, how's the data transferred ashore? So we have one example, which we're using now, which is 3G, 4G. The um, tablet, if we supply the tablet, is equipped with a um, international SIM. And so when the vessels in port, it can transmit its data, which is not great, but it's better than nothing. And our, excuse me, our partnerships with, um, with um, KVH say they will install for no capex up front a connectivity as a service separate VSAT channel, um, which we can then they can then install with that a Wi-Fi um, spot. And then we're good. We're good to go. And um, sending um, high quality data, and of course that then opens up lots of other opportunities for the vessel. If the vessel's really got no communications whatsoever, it's really just a matter of we can download um, when we get to the next port or when we get within sight of land. Okay, maybe um, one for you there from Luke Dan um, Daniel. Yes, I'm just reading the question. So I'm um, not exactly sure I understand it 100%, but um, uh, the dynamic trim optimization does take into account uh, the sea state. So um, if this, uh, what you're saying, is correlated with what correlated which trim is what optimal, then it would be handled. Different types of waves, I think he's talking about. I don't know about different types of waves, but I guess a lot of people on the webinar would. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's clear. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, for example, the pitching angle is, is measured and also the, the, the motion of the vessel. So that will be included. Well, there's an interesting question from Nigel Cleave, slow down. I know you wanted to take questions from industry people as well as analytics questions. I, I don't know he's, if he's yeah. understanding how to encourage owners and seafarers to adopt the app as the more users there are, the greater the data received. But I think that's not how, how it works. It's like you're using the app like as a sensor. This is sort of quite far down. I just thought it was an interesting question to pick out. I don't know if you'd like to. Answer Nigel's question. I think, um, yeah, I, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a great question. The what we kind of differentiate between charters obviously have an interest in using the app because it gives them clarity on fuel consumption, and um, and but also some of the services which I mentioned, such as monitoring the hull fouling and um, really accurate speed and consumption clauses for any set of conditions you would like. We we classify as at least equivalent owner and charter of benefits. So um, I think if we're all needing to start um, being really aware of the environmental performance of the vessels and the, and the sort of losses of um, fuel efficiency that, that can get in the way of that, having uh, starting with one version of the truth and one set of data is, um, is a way to go. And there are probably as many benefits for owners to um, to really have a good handle on how their the curve of their vessel the performance is um, is going um, compared with um, with charters so I think it is something that will be um, progressively adopted um, uh, across the industry it's, um, it's still fairly early days someone asked how many 
uh, vessels we have on. I won't uh, talk to that, but I'll just talk in terms of the number of people that have it, the number of companies that have it on board, which is probably around 20 now. And those fleets probably add up to, you know, getting beyond 500 ships and um, probably heading towards 1,000 ships, the size of the fleet, not the full deployment yet. We're, um, we're relatively, um, you know, we're past the early stage, but it's um, we're talking about it now, so it's still kind of breaking news. Oh, sounds great. So, so Leonard said about ship will we'll treat that as commercial confidentiality. I'll, I'll dismiss that. So I don't know how many ships are using the app today. Well, you said 20, actually, didn't you? Not how many customers? No, customers, yeah, customers, yeah. Yeah, with multiple vessels, of course. Yeah. Okay, well, we've got t 10 minutes left, and there's lots of questions on okay. lots of different yeah. aspects of <laughs> the modelling. <laughs> what I can see, I don't know, maybe... Okay. Um, we take... Maybe you, you sure. choose them if you if you want to. Uh, I mean, yeah, right. lots of good questions here. Thanks. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, benchmarking is uh, uh, and speed loss is uh, is interesting because uh, we don't normally use the, the speed loss. Uh, we normally look at rather uh, added power or added cost. You know, because that's what you're paying for. You're not normally paying for speed. Uh, but uh, we can take in um, to our model C trials if you have them. You have to be a little bit skeptical because sometimes they can be very unrealistic, even if they're supposed to be real sea trials. Uh, but also over time, as we get more data and combine more and more vessels, uh, you less and less need them uh, because the, the uh, passage of time and what happens during uh, hull cleanings or dry dockings uh, introduces a sort of benchmark information, um, which is hard to, it's, you know, it will take a long time to explain the details of that. But as you get more data from the vessel and other vessels, uh, you, you are less and less reliant on sea trials, for example. Oh. Uh, and the next one maybe is also uh, yeah. Sergio. Sergio, thank you. Um, this is also a great question. It's very difficult. Uh, in the best case, if you have different uh, sources of information on power, for example, then you can model the, the engine and the, the propeller and so on, and then you can try to isolate it but it's, it's hard to give a short answer to that one, but it can be done. Oh. This question from Utam has stood out to me. So he's asking what other equipment you're monitoring apart from the, the main engine room machinery. But I think it is mainly the engine room machinery, which is you're using as far as equipment, is it? Or? Well, we've got some examples where um, we're monitoring actually lubricant stocks on board. And um, because lubricant suppliers are interested in minimizing feed rate to cylinders for cylinder oil because it's a very high value item. Um, and also reconciling the actual purchases of um, cylinder oil with the sort of microscopic changes to the consumption of cylinder oil, things like that. So it can, uh, the point is it can really read anything, any meter on any vessel. Uh, we're only really applying our artificial intelligence to propulsion energy, um, but we do, report and we can put um, alerts around auxiliary engine usage, boiler engine usage, because we've also found even on some of the data locked vessels that um, it's less often the case that people have put sensor um, flow meters on things on all the auxiliary engines or the boiler or something. So the good thing about um, about capture is it can be used to cap to fill in those gaps, the kind of um, digitalization gaps, if you like, on board. Oh, so I can see two questions about the accuracy of the model. It must be very difficult to answer that in the seven minutes we've got left. I don't know, Daniel, is that a, something you want to tackle about? Luke McCallitis, yeah, sure. Harshit Tripathi is also asking about accuracy. Sergio Pierelli <laughs> asking about accuracy. Yeah, it's it's an important question, and it's uh, hard to you have to frame it correctly because it depends on exactly what you mean. And then I can see in the questions that uh, the guys have have tried to define a good. Uh, set of assumptions for that, but um, it really depends on many, many other things as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's really the, the interesting bit about that is probably the difference between like totally perfect autologued high frequency data and then going through, um, uh, let's say, uh, capture and then uh, noon reports and then let's say noon reports with lots of issues in them. That covers an enormous spread. So the short answer, I guess, is that the, it, towards the first end of the spectrum where you have autologged or capture, uh, accuracy is really not a problem. It's, 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 it's great. Uh, you can get great accuracy in the sense of doing speed optimization, even trim and certainly fouling. And if you go to the other end of the spectrum, uh, trim becomes uh, difficult. 
speed can still be done in most cases uh, with less accuracy though. And fouling is generally the most robust one because it takes uh, a long time to develop. It's a slow moving process. Wow, okay. Yeah, we'll send all the questions to you afterwards. So if, if you're potential customers, I think Simon and Jade, Daniel might be happy to answer o o offline as well. And, yes, great, thank you. Uh, sure. okay. C right. finals, a commercial question. I don't know if you're able to answer okay. that. Top one. So sure, the average cost, the starting point is around, for a small fleet is around $4,000 a year. Uh, so that's um, a little over about $300 a month. And the time it takes to set up on board um, is really as long as it takes to um, put the either the tablet we, we can supply or a smartphone. And we find smartphone cameras are really good. They tend to be higher spec. So to get that linked up to Wi-Fi with us, to download the app, which doesn't take long at all. And then um, the configuration is done, setting up meters and things with smartphone pictures of the meters. We can assist with that. We can um, You can simply download all the configuration. So cut a long story short, you can, if you need to be, you can be up and running with the thing configured in an hour if you've got an hour of solid time to devote to it, especially when you're new. We, we provide um, physical and online manuals, and um, but we can help you every step of the way, as they say. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's about six questions roughly about accuracy, which I've moved into the answered column. But I guess you kind of were very difficult to give more of an answer in the in the time we got. So there's two more here: one about parallel, about vessel loading condition, and question from Scott about tidal streams and currents. Is that, is that for you, Simon? Do you think? I think that'd be best um, for Daniel. I think. Uh, so loading condition, uh, yes, uh, indirectly. So we always uh, use uh, draft and trim data to uh, to inform the model. Uh, tidal streams, uh, currents, yes, uh, all sources of um, all types of currents uh, are um, are taken into the account by our forecasting and hindcasting service. Well, wow, that sounds great. Well, in the last three minutes, maybe a two minute wrap up from Simon and then closing word from Vida, I should think, is it? There's great more questions okay. coming in. <laughs> well, thank you very much for all the questions. We will, if, um, if Carl can give us a list of all these questions, then we will... Um, certainly go through them and, and send back detailed answers to all of them. And um, we can also, I don't know how it works with digital ship with a copy of the presentation, but no problem. It's a bit busy. I'd need to declutter it a bit because of all the um, animation, but we can certainly do that. And um, we'll do that later on today with, with Carl. Um, so thank you very much. Really um, flattering to have all these questions and um, we, can take a lot more than that if you've got more to throw at us. Very happy. Um, the whole point is to make the services which we've been laboring on for the last 13 years are uh, really applicable to every vessel. And that's what Green Steam Capture and our hybrid AI model does. So please contact us at that rapid results at greensteam.com if you would like to ask us any more questions or would like to have a demo. Uh, of Green Steam Capture and for what, whatever else um, we can help you with. Thanks very much to everybody. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Spider. Thanks, Daniel. It's um, been really great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. We'll, pass back to, oh, we'll pass back to Vida for the closing Sorry, word Daniel. then. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Just to recap, we heard Simon Whitford and Daniel Jacobson of Green's team updating us on the newest modeling using low frequency vessel data and data collection via Capture app. They are offering you a free demo. We'll pass you an email how you can get it. And this Thursday, Carl and I are hosting a webinar on a quite innovative case study from CPO container shipped free array. Join us then. And now Digital Ship VPO is logging off until this Thursday. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Cheers.